How do woodpeckers not get hurt? Woodpeckers can generate forces of over a thousand G's when hammering away at wood, which is insane when you consider that pilots can lose consciousness at only 10 G's when flying a plane. Thankfully, woodpeckers have a few ways of reducing the shock and distributing it throughout the body so that less reaches the brain. It all starts with the beak. It's shaped like a chisel, so when they hammer down into the wood, the force gets directed downwards instead of reverberating a lot more like a hammer would. The beak is also shaped to direct a lot of the force down through the neck and spine, as opposed to sending it to the brain. Now their necks come with extra cervical vertebrae, which enhance their flexibility and reduce shock. But not all of the shock gets reduced, and some of it gets absorbed by the brain. So how does the brain stay in place? That's where their tongue comes into play. They have surprisingly long and flexible tongues. Their tongues can actually wrap around the brain case in a spiral, which prevents the brain from moving as they peck away at the wood. It also increases the amount of shock that's absorbed. Thanks to all of these mechanisms, woodpeckers can stay relatively comfortable while pecking at wood. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it to communicate. You may have heard woodpeckers occasionally communicating with drum calls. They also have regular vocalizations, such as the iconic pileated woodpecker call. This call sounds similar to the northern flicker call, which a lot of people get confused with. But since the pileated woodpecker is the largest woodpecker in the U.S., it has the loudest and most resonant sound. Northern flickers, on the other hand, have a more consistent tone throughout their call. Northern flickers also have a singular call, which kind of sounds like the yellow-bellied sapsucker, but not so much like the red-bellied woodpecker's trill. Red-bellied woodpeckers also make this call when announcing their presence. Despite all of their similarities, all of the woodpeckers make different sounds, and that's one of the things that I personally find fascinating about birds. Two birds could be genetically and visually similar, but they could have completely different songs. Let me know what other bird songs you'd like to learn about. Thanks for watching.